In this week's Torah portion, in the book of Devarim, Deuteronomy, in um, chapter 16, it starts off with the mitzvah, the command to appoint judges, judges who are qualified, according to Jewish law, to judge the Jewish people. Let's read some verses from the Torah. Appoint yourself judges for your tribes in all, you'll set, in all, your, in all your settlements that Hashem is giving you, and make sure that they administer honest judgment for the people. This is what they have to do. This is the this is the instructions to the judges. Do not bend justice. Do not give special consideration to anyone. Do not take bribes, since bribery makes the wise blind and perverts the words of the righteous. Pursue perfect honesty, so that you will live and occupy the land that God has given you. That's in a nutshell what kind of judges we're looking for. The Rambam, Maimonides, in his magnum opus, the Mishnah Torah, the Book of Jewish Law, in the laws of the Sanhedrin, the laws of judges, he elaborates on this. I'm going to read you uh, a couple of lines from the Rambam. This is how this is the kind of judge that we're looking for. And the Rambam says these are the kind of judges on the smallest courts that are not that significant. There are small courts all over the land, courts of three, and they deal with uh, civil law. Uh, and then there are higher courts that deal with more serious things. And then there are higher courts. There are many many levels. And then on the top 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 level. The Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin, that they sit in Jerusalem uh, on the Temple Mount, and they are the highest and the most perfect human beings that uh, Jewish people produce. But this is the lowest level of a court, and this is the minimum, minimum requirements for every judge amongst the Jewish people. This is what the Rambam writes, chapter 2. He must possess at least seven, seven attributes, wisdom, humility, fear of God, loathing for money, a love for truth. He must be a person who is beloved at large, and he must have a good reputation. All these qualities are mentioned explicitly in the Torah when relating Moshe, Moses' statements concerning the appointment of judges in Deuteronomy and Devarim, chapter 1, verse 13. So the verse says, beloved to your tribes. What does this mean? This refers to those who are appreciated by people. What will make them beloved? Well, if they conduct themselves favorably, and they, they're humble, they're good, good company. They conduct their business with people very gently and honestly. It says they have to be men of power. What does this mean, men of power? This refers to people who are mighty in their observance of mitzvot, who are very demanding on themselves, and who overcome their evil inclination until they possess no unfavorable qualities, no trace of an unpleasant reputation. These are the lowest, the minimum, minimum. It says they're man of power, which also implies that they should have courageous heart to save the oppressed person from one who is oppressing them. Moses, just as Moses was humble, so too every judge has to be humble. It also says they have to be God-fearing. The intent is obvious, it means. It, it, that's obvious, right? Then it also mentions men who hate profit. What does that mean? People who do not become overly concerned, even about their own money. They do not pursue the accumulation of money for anyone who is overly concerned about wealth will ultimately be corrupted. And then it says they have to be men of truth, people who pursue justice because of their own inclination. They love truth, they hate crime, and they flee from all forms of crookedness. Wow. This is this is the bare minimum to be a judge in Israel, even in the lowest, lowest courts. Now, if you think about it today, the court system in the world is beyond pathetic. In the United States, let's talk about democratic appointed judges or left-wing judges that corruption knows no bounds. They'll do anything to put Trump away and the people who supported him. They're putting people away for years for, for demonstrating um, peacefully or just walking through the Capitol without any intent, without, I'm not the people who beat up policemen and stuff like that, it's just a handful of them. They belong behind bars. But people who walked in peacefully to the Capitol on January 6th, these people do not deserve to be in jail for years. Maybe uh, fine maybe a couple of days, maybe a month. It's insane. So in America, half of the justice system is completely corrupt. When you talk about the World Court, for example, the ICJ, International Criminal Court of Justice, or the ICC, sickening, totally sickening. They are the epitome of darkness. They are the epitome of corruption of lies, everything that the Rambam says, what a judge has to be, they're the exact opposite.
But if you want to talk about a court system that is the worst in the world and in the history of mankind, it's the courts in the land of Israel. The judiciary in Israel is so corrupt, they're actually rep completely representing the enemies of the Jews. They do everything possible to weaken the state of Israel, to hurt the Jewish people of Israel, to hurt our security, to compromise our security. They're absolutely insane. They're dictators. They took for themselves power that they don't deserve. They are not elected officials. They keep on seizing more and more power for themselves. And they are, there's, there's never been a court system in a country that works overtime to destroy the country and the people of the country. Recently, they arrested a, 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 couple, of, uh, a couple of soldiers who risked their lives to, 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 to watch over terrorists in prisons. And these monstrosities of Hamas, these filthy, disgusting Nazis of Hamas, who, 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 who participated in the massacre of October 7th, they complained that they were abused and the sick judiciary in Israel puts the Jews in prison without any proof. I could go on and on. It's sickening beyond description, the sickness of the judiciary in the land of Israel, the Supreme Court and all the courts. Sickening. And that's great. Do you know why? Because before Mashiach comes, it says in all our holy books that everything that is opposite of Mashiach is happening, but on steroids. Mashiach brings truth to the world. And this world is drowning in lies. Why? Because right before Mashiach comes, the darkness is the most intense. And everything that we see today is exactly what's going to happen. The opposite when Mashiach comes. All the countries are against Israel. Because when Mashiach comes, they will all serve the land of Israel. They will all accept the sovereignty of Mashiach. That's why they're all against us. There is so much Jew hatred now because when Mashiach comes, there will be so much love of the Jewish people. So when we look at the court system in Israel, why it's the, the lowliest and the most despicable court system any country has, because in America, half the court system are fighting the other half because the Democrats hate the Republicans and vice versa. But, but here you have a court system that's against the whole country. And that's exactly the way it's supposed to be darkness before Mashiach comes, because when Mashiach comes, Mashiach obviously is going to lead the Sanhedrin, he's going to lead the Supreme Court of the land of Israel, Mashiach is the epitome of justice and righteousness, and all the members of the high court, the words of Torah and the word of God will come out from Jerusalem, the Supreme Court will be the most righteous and honest and God-fearing people in the world, and that's why the Supreme Court that sits in Jerusalem today is the exact opposite. Don't let it take you down because it's a sign for what we're going to experience very soon. Good Shabbos.